Hello, this is Fred Burke with TotalFinancialLiberty.com. I'd like to talk about a few ways to uh, locate motivated sellers. Uh, let's get right into it. Bandit signs. Uh, these may be illegal in certain cities and certain counties. They are illegal in certain, in a lot of cities and a lot of counties. Uh, but all I go by the rule of thumb is if I see other people doing it, I'll go ahead and do it until I get the phone call from the county and they tell me to stop doing it or they're going to find me. So bandit signs. Be sure to place your bandit signs at busy intersections and around your target areas. Wherever it is that you're going to invest in, you're, want to, you're going to want to go ahead and you're going to want to place your bandit signs uh, around these areas. Uh, what I do is I would go ahead and take bandit signs and I will post them at the exits of the Walmarts, of the shopping centers that are close to the neighborhoods. If I'm going to live in that house, I try to put myself in the mindset of if I'm going to live in this house, in this neighborhood, where am I going to go to get my groceries? Where am I going to go to do my shopping? So where is Walmart? Where is Kroger's? Where is HEB? Or whatever major shopping centers you have in whatever city or state it is that you're in. I try to post all my signs at all the exits. Right past the stop sign, usually coming onto the highway, there'll be an easement. I post it past the stop sign because I know, just like a lot of you do, nobody really stops exactly at that stop sign. And also, I'm keeping it off of Walmart's property, and I'm putting it onto the county property, which is the easement. So um, if you look and see at some of the videos that I've posted already, uh, you'll see how I do it, where I do it, and I explain why I do it. So it's a great place to, uh, it's a great way to get your message out there. Oh yeah, I, I would post my signs between about 3 to 5 a.m. We've actually started doing it a little bit earlier. Uh, we've started at 10, 11 o'clock uh, in the evening. Uh, because we post 100 to 200 signs a night and blanket our area pretty good. So um, you're going to want to make sure that when you're doing your signs, uh, if you do do them at 3 to 5 a.m., make sure you're wearing, you'll always see me in my videos wearing a white shirt so it's bright so people can identify me. Uh, if you have any kind of reflective stuff that you can wear, that's fine. Put the hazards on in your truck. Don't park in the road uh, where you could possibly get hit, pull off to the side of the road. Walk over to where you're going to post your signs if you have to. Pull over into a Walmart. And uh, I do, I drive to, I make my signs up first. I turn them upside down in my truck. And this way I can go ahead and usually I have a driver. But if I don't have a driver and I'm by myself, I can go ahead, jump out with my hammer in hand, pull a sign, pop it in the ground, jump right in, go to the next exit. If I come to a, a four cross intersection, a major intersection where I'm going to post, I find one place to park, maybe there's a Walgreens or a gas station, I'll park right there and I'll pull my four to six signs and I'll go ahead and I'll post them and I'll make sure there's no traffic around. Obviously there's less traffic at 3 to 5 in the morning than there is at 10 or 11 o'clock at night, so you decide what's best for you. Uh, flyers are another great way to start getting your message out there. Um, if you can find places that will let you post your flyers, post them everywhere you can. I have them at the local grocery stores, the gas stations, the home repair stores, any place that will let me post my flyers, I have flyers posted. Business cards. Business cards are very important. Business cards are a must. You should have business cards made up as soon as you can afford them. I pay about, I don't know, $29, $30 for every thousand cards I have. I get them from my local Kinko's, um, but as strictly out of convenience. I don't buy them off the internet. I don't want to wait for them. I want to get them done as quickly as possible. Plus, they keep me on file, so I call up and just add another thousand. Um, they'll have them to me in two, three days, sometimes a day or two, depending on how quickly and who it is that's working on them. Um, so you should have business cards made up, and you should um, have business cards uh, posted everywhere. If I mail out a water bill, a business card goes in my water bill. If I mail out an um, electric bill, a business card goes in my electric bill. If I mail out a phone bill, a business card goes in my phone bill. If I get gas, business cards go with the gas pumps. If I uh, go to a restaurant, I leave, bath, I leave uh, business cards on the counter if they'll let me, or I'll leave business cards in the bathrooms when I can. Um, if my wife was with me or my fiance, I'll go ahead and have her leave the uh, business cards in the ladies' room also. Um, there's also usually those signs in the uh, bathrooms where they go ahead and they post uh, different advertisements. I'll stick a few of my business cards onto those also. So you never know where you're going to get a lead from when you have business cards. But I suggest that you use business cards, get them, and especially if you're doing knocking on doors or mailing outs and you're doing pre-foreclosures, uh, subject twos, or possible short sales, 
Um, you're going to want to leave your business card in the doors when the people aren't home, or you're going to want to include your business card with your mailer and with your letter. So uh, get business cards that are well worth it. Understand that uh, I try to buy them as cheap as possible. Um, I do them one color. I don't do glossy. I don't do anything fancy because these things are going to be given away by the bundle. So I give them to my bird dogs also. I'll give them 300 business cards at a clip. So, you know, these things are going to be given away. Some are going to be wasted. Some are going to be thrown in the garbage. So uh, they are just what they are. They're advertising tools, but they're not always going to get me a million deals. So uh, they are going to, some of them are going to end up in the trash. So I don't get too fancy on my business cards. But again, that's totally your choice. Mine work very good for me, but again, that's your choice. Car signs. Um, you should definitely get magnetic signs if you can. What I do on my pickup truck is my banded signs that I have professionally made. Uh, my back window holds two signs perfectly. So it still even leaves a little space in between. So I put one side for my buying and one side for my selling. So I have two banded signs in the back window of my truck at all times. So instead of putting magnetics, uh, my banded signs cost me $1.79 plus tax. So I have them in my window and it's a rolling billboard. So anyone that's behind me on the other side of the highway will see that I buy houses and see that I sell houses. Newspaper ads, if you can afford them, by all means do them. If you can afford the little penny saver ads, um, <coughs> excuse me, or the bigger newspaper ads, by all means, if you can afford it, why not? Go ahead. Just be different. Have a USP, a unique selling point. Don't just say we buy houses. Everyone says we buy houses. I have students that say the mailman buys houses. I have students that say grandpa buys houses. Try to be unique in your message. Don't just say we buy houses, but get the point across that that is what you do. You buy houses. A uh, website. A website, you know, you can go and get a free website at places like ulmb.com. Uh, you don't need one right now to just get started, or you can go to godaddy.com and get about a $12.95 a month website. Uh, you don't need one to get started, but when you're ready and you can get one, I suggest you use one and you put it in all your marketing materials and drive as many people as you can to your website so you can help weed out the people that are not motivated. Direct mail. Uh, when you can afford it, you should use direct mail. Uh, I've used direct mail before. Matter of fact, me and Terry are getting ready to put together a new campaign. We're going to be filming it. We're going to be going out. We're going to be wholesaling houses. We're going to be filming the, filming the whole operation, so you'll see us doing it. There's some articles and there's some videos on the website already about direct mail campaign, and about mailing out postcards, and about what kind of response you should, um, you should get from it. Foreclosure lists. Uh, I obtained my foreclosure list here in Houston from a, a place called foreclosureshouston.com. I feel their leads are pretty good. They're accurate, uh, so I use them, but you can go to places like realtytrack.com. Try them for a seven-day free trial and see what kind of response you get from them. For sale by owner sites are a great place to go and, uh, and to target for sale by owners. Um, basically, you can go and you can do this on the Internet. Uh, so you don't have to drive neighborhoods to find for sale by owners anymore. They're on the Internet. And you can actually sign up for free accounts. You can keep track of the houses that you're watching. So as the months go by, if a house hasn't sold and it's still listed, Chances are the homeowners are more motivated than they were the first month when you made a, when you if you made an offer or um, if uh, see if they came down in price at all. So if it's still on there a month later, the motivation is probably a lot higher than what it was from the get go. Okay, that pretty much covers the um, real quick uh, going into uh, what we want to discuss this evening. Um, again, this is Fred Burke with TotalFinancialLiberty.com. I wanted to give you a few ideas of locating motivated sellers. Again, this is very little. Uh, there's so much more on the website. Go to www.totalfinancialliberty.com backslash total.htm and get signed up today for your 30-day free trial.